Wow. Kind of really pretty. It's like I'm standing in liquid lava. Well, lava kind of is like a liquid, isn't it? That's not important. So, I'm going to be covering Modinari's moveset. I had originally done this a long time ago on my PS3 version. I currently have my PS3 Sanko Kobasura 4 Simuragi playlist locked off. And I probably won't be unlocking it until next year. I locked it off due to um, reasons. Mainly because um, I had done a bunch of moveset videos like this. And there was somebody who was saving my videos and then talking crap to me. And I didn't feel like they deserved those videos if they were going to talk sh shit to me. So I locked off the whole playlist and it's been locked off for several months. But I do realize there are people that probably are wondering why. Because I did cover a bunch of character movesets. And I feel like I'm punishing those people who did like those videos or who used them as guides. Because a lot of times people use these videos as guides. And I felt like I'm punishing people, but it won't be unlocked again until next year. It's locked off permanently for the rest of the year. Um, but I am redoing all those videos. And I've already covered already a lot of characters. I've already redone a lot of people. So we're going to be focusing on Modinari now. So normally the way I do these is I go through and show you all of the movesets. All of his moves, all three of his R2s, and all of his basic attacks, which are these, as well as the red, the red bar there, underneath L1 plus triangle. Um, L1 plus square is a skill revision. So skill revisions are only available on Sumeragi, because um, on Vanilla Four they did not exist, and you can buy those through the Tenka Metal Shop. You don't actually need to unlock them. They are not unlockable like other moves. You actually have to buy them. So that's what that is. First though, his character image phrase, um, when you use a Giga Basura attack, um, I'll just go ahead and show you what it is. So Giga Basura is when you link to another character or whoever your comrade is. I have Keiji because I can get out of bounds with Keiji. So I always have him as a ally when I do these videos. So then you can see Nichirian, which is the Tori Gate. So we are hovering forever. So his character image phrase in English is Willy Strategist. And in Japanese, I believe it is Kikei Chisho. And his Giga Basura title, which is what you just saw, is Nichirian, which is a Tori Gate. It's a Tori Gate at Ip Tsukushima which is what I'm actually standing in front of right now. So his uh, Giga Basara artwork image is that gate. He's obsessed with it. He always says Nichiri, like that he's talking about that gate. So his seiyu voice actor is Nakahara Shigeru. So Shigeru Nakahara. Um, voice fits him, I like it. So his weapon is a, is a ring toe, a ring blade, and his element is light. I don't believe, I think I do have his personal inscription on this weapon. His personal inscription is Scheming God. So basically what that does is he cannot be staggered when he's attacking while he is setting up his traps. And how the, the duration of the traps for how long they last is increased. Normally some of his traps, because he, he's a trap character. I don't mean trap as in he's a woman. I mean trap as in that's what his, his attacks are. Like um, a lot of his attacks are trap based. So they last longer basically is all that means. So, and we'll go through these. So if you hold square, it's capturing move fury. So it's, it's Nukite, which is capturing move, and then I believe it's Retsu for fury. So each one of these characters has an, an eight string attack. So if you tap it a total of eight times, they will do something like this. Also my camera joystick is broken, so it'll start rotating slowly to the left every once in a while can't do much about that. So if you hold it though, he'll do this. And he can go for a very long time, that's what she said. So that's what, if you hold a square attack, that's what that is. So triangle is commanding move arrows, which I believe is um, Mejite Sha. So you can't hold it, you just push it once 
and it, you, it'll drop enemies because I'm out of balance, you can't see it. But you actually can hold it. If you hold it though, you get his little symbol, his crest. I don't know if you could see it very well because I'm out of bounds. It kind of acts a little funny. But you get his crest and you can move it to the left and the right. And wherever that little circle with his family crest, the three dots with the bar over it, um, wherever that crest is at is in the direction that they'll shoot. So those, he summons enemies to shoot arrows. And if you hold down square, triangle, sorry, if you hold it down, you'll, that little green circle with his crest will show up and wherever it points is in the direction they'll shoot. It doesn't go very far though and it moves very slowly. So direction, so with the direction plus triangle, it's called rebounding move turn, which is kashite ten, I believe. So it's like this, it's what I was doing a minute ago. Because if you hit triangle by itself, he'll summon the enemies, or if you hold it, you can move the little green circle. It only goes left to right and it's very slow. But if you move forward and then hit triangle, he'll do like a little spin. It's all majestic. So his R1, which is Repelling Move Barrier, you can summon this up to three times. It's also summonable in midair. There's also something really cool you can do with that, along with his third R2, which I'll show in a while. You can actually combine a lot of his attacks, and it's pretty cool. Um, so R1, Repelling Move Barrier, which I believe is Hajikite um, Hike. So. Yeah, see, I threw it because I'm hovering in midair like an idiot. Um, doing these out of bounds is a little bad. I need to come a little closer into the map. You can see the arrow on the upper right of the screen. Now I'm actually in the field of the stage, so I won't be able to drop anymore. So he summons it like this. You can summon up to two of them at a time. There's also, it doesn't tell you this, but if you actually hold down R1, He'll kind of spin his weapon and it'll pull enemies into him and they do get attacked. You can hold it for about as long as that was. I think that was about, let's see how long it is, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine seconds. I also like how the camera gets pulled in. It's like, oh, come to me, my child. Wow, Motonari. So if you hold it down, he'll pull enemies into the barrier. And what happens is enemies will run into these and get knocked back. What's cool about this, if you set them up like this across from each other, you can actually trap enemies in between here and they'll bounce off one barrier and then hit the other one. And they'll ping pong and bounce off both of them and they'll be, they can't get out of it and they just die. So if you get, if you set up the barriers like that, you can actually trap enemies in between them. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's also very messed up because I've done that before to boss characters. I've trapped them in between them and they can't get out of it because they once you hit one barrier you bounce off and hit the other one and it's like ping pong and they, they, they get stuck like that and they bounce really 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 quickly. It looks kind of funny and then they just die horribly. So that that's a neat trick. So R1 plus triangle now. Um, or yeah L1 plus triangle is Luring Move Illusion. So I believe it's, I don't know how to say some of these words. I'm trying to look at the kanji. And where the little brackets, the little bracket, it, it says, it says Gen. So Illusion, Gen. But Luring Move, it's like Sasoite. So like S-A-S-O-I-T-E. So however you say that, I probably said it completely wrong. Um, so this. So basically what he does is he creates an illusion of himself which will lure enemies to it. Even main enemies will go to towards it because they'll think it's him. So he creates like a double of himself and over a set period of time it'll explode. So enemies will get pulled towards it and after a while it'll just explode. Like if they attack it. Otherwise it does stay there for a while. It, st it stays there for a long time. Kind of looks a little weird. So you can summon a double of himself and it's staying there for a very long time. It should have faded by now. Well, that's kind of creeper isn't it? Well, basically, that's what that is. It's kind of cool when you look at it. It kind of reminds me of making the statues in uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. How you could uh, use a song to make doubles of the masks to put on the 
the platforms to get into the stone temple temple okay uh stone tower temple anyway so if you go on to his r2s now i believe that i have these in order so his first one is sealed move hold which is fujite kai kai is hold um so basically what this does is he summons up to four rings around enemies and he'll kind of like control them in a way where they can attack. Um, I'm not near anybody right now so I can't show that but basically he, he captures who's ever near him and they follow you. They kind of move with you. It's almost like the way the bearded angels are with Sora and Ultima. Um, how he can capture people and use their abilities. It's kind of the same. It's just all it does is you can capture up to four enemies at a time and they just fight for you. But they do die eventually. It, it doesn't last forever. So his second R2 is finishing move shine. So I believe it's Shui Noite Sho. Sho shine. It's sho is, is shine, man. What a tongue twister. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> sho is shine. So basically it's like this where you can summon a sun. And you can actually move it. You can move it like this really slowly. like, um, And it attacks enemies. It goes pretty far. This is about as far as it'll go. Um, I like to use that one a lot. And then his third R2, or is the, which is the last one, is called Forbidden Move Bind. So it's Kinjite Baku. And this is where I'm going to tell you how that works. So it goes like this. And... You can hold it up to three times, and if you let it go, it summons a ring. However, if you come into the center of it and launches R1, it'll cause this ring barrier thing to pull the ring into the center, and it'll push it back out. See? And you can trap enemies in between the barriers, because the barriers get pulled to the center, by the way. They get pulled to the center, and then once the ring touches the barrier, it gets pushed back out. And it'll last like this for a while. You can keep summoning... Um, using his R1 to keep resetting it, but eventually it does wear off, see? And then it, if you do it like this, if you summon two of these, two of the barriers, and then you wait for the ring to wear off because it pulls the barriers to the center of it, so once it wears off, it breaks and sends the barriers out from each other like this. So it's kind of cool to, to launch it. So you want to launch it first, and then throw a barrier into the center of it very quickly, and then immediately launch another one. And then if you wait for the ring to finish its cycle, it'll pull the barriers to the center of it. And then once it fades, it'll push the barriers out across from each other like this. And it's actually pretty cool to do very early. So if you want to catch somebody, you want to hurry up and use his third R2, use it and then come to the center of it and immediately use his R1 to launch two barriers. And the ring will go... Uh, outwards, then inwards, outwards, and then inwards again because it only goes twice. And then once it finishes, it pushes the barriers out from each other like this. So it's it's very easy to trap characters and they will not be able to get out of that because they'll be pulled in by the circle. So by the time you launch the other two barriers, no Hanbei, um, they'll still be trapped and they won't be able to get out. So I want to see if he actually really spawned in up there because there's a way to break the stage in such a way that... Um, He's not really there. <laughs> he doesn't load in for until a certain point. So I'm going to see if I can use KG to break me back out. Normally when I do these videos like this, I will break out of the stage and then break back in so that I can show you what the moves look like when they're actually being used. But trying to break out of something once you've already broken into it is a little difficult. Um, mainly because you get caught by invisible walls. That can be a little hard to get through. Ah, oh, it's gonna take me just a sec. So that's basically all of his main moves. Um, his skill revision too, by the way, is this, where he sends out rings that will... I don't even know how to explain this. It goes out, and then it comes back in. And it can go exactly to where he is. It's very creeper. Like, if you let it go, it'll whip in front of you. However, if you hold it down, it brings the ring to him. If you hold it down, you see how it brings it back to me? So if you just push L1 plus square once, just push it, it'll send it forward. But if you hold it down, hold it, it'll bring the ring to him. It'll ricochet off of itself and come back to where Motonari is. So we want to keep that in mind. That if you hold it down, it'll bring the ring to him. But if you don't, it'll just send it in front of him and it'll, it'll stay there. Um, 
Damn it. I was out and then I came back in. That's what he said. Oh. <sighs> try to break out and try to break back in is difficult. And I haven't played this in so long. Actually, Hanbei really is there. He's above me. He's like, you can't escape me. Why would I want to? <laughs> he <d> <sighs> Yeah, this is what happens when I haven't done these types of videos in a long time. I tend to make mistakes. All right. I think he was really there. He was he was talking to me. So I'm going to try to get back onto the stage here. Because Motonari is a character who doesn't really lift off the screen. Um, it was going to be a little hard to get him back in. But I did it. So He doesn't lift very high. Like some of the characters in this game, they have jumps that are really high. But he doesn't jump very high. So trying to get him through things is going to be a little tougher. So I'm going to show you what his solo boss looks like. If I can get the gauge filled up in time, I can show you what it looks like. So this is what a single boss attack is. So he kind of does like a few swings. And then when he finishes, he summons a beam of light. Like he, it's actually a mini, a mini sun that forms up above him. You can't see it because I can't zoom out far enough. But if you're actually fighting against him and he's your enemy, he actually summons a little tiny sun, and it's pretty cool. Um, so his ring goes up in the air, and in the center of the ring, a sun will appear. Because he's all affiliated with light and the sun and, and the gay Nichiren. Um, so that's basically what he is. Is Hanbei really there? I mean, he's, he's underneath me, but I cannot see him because I have to wait for Matabe and Kanbe to uh, get angry outside or something like that. So let me see if I can use this. So this is what this attack looks like when you're using it against people. I'm being hit by something. Let me see if I can grab this guy. Because I'm, pl I'm playing on hard difficulty, but a lot of these enemies have really low life levels. So I can't actually capture any of them. It doesn't allow me to. Um, I can't capture any of them. But basically that is what this move does though. It just puts rings around enemies and they will fight alongside Motonari. But they do kind of... He kind of almost uses them as, as like human shields if you would. So they do not last forever. But that's what that move does. I can't actually show it to you because I'm too high leveled for this difficulty. If I would have put it on heaven though I would have been dead by now because I've been hit a few times. Um, but that's really what it does. I can't fully show it correctly. But I just gave you a good description of what it is. Um, Hanbei is actually following me, but you can't see that he is. But he is there. It's just I haven't went outside to get the cutscene to activate between Kanbei and Matabe. So I think that's why Hanbei isn't actually loaded in yet. That's really all I can say about his main attack, so he really is a fun character to use. I actually liked him a lot. Um, however, when I first met Modenari, though, it was in Sengoku Basura Samurai Heroes, which is actually Sengoku Basura 3. It just got translated and brought over, but it's actually 3, but when they, when they translated it and brought it over, they changed it to Samurai Heroes, but in Japanese, it was actually Sengoku Basura 3. Um, they just changed it when they translated it, and I'm not entirely sure why they would change the name altogether and not call it 3. They just call it Samurai Heroes. Um, I don't know why. Sometimes when things get translated and localized, they do change the names of things. So I can't really say why they did that. I don't really know. Um, I did like his English voice, though, there. I can't remember the guy's name right now. Um, but his Japanese voice actor here is... Uh, Shigeru uh, Nakahara so that's great let me go all the way back out and see if I can activate this cutscene because Hanbei technically is following behind me right now you can see the little red um, horned helmet on the mini map behind me that's actually Hanbei so he's technically in a ghost form right now when you break through these stages you can break enemies out of their boss locations and they will follow you around the stage in a ghost form but once you reach a certain threshold within the stage or activate a particular cutscene, they will actually really load in. So in order for me to get him to really appear, I think I need to go out here and get this to happen. Just going to show a little bit of what he actually is like in actual combat instead of out of bounds. Like I said, he is a fun character to use. A lot of his attacks are very simple though. 
Um, he is a lot better here compared to the way he was in Samurai Heroes. A lot of the care, all of the characters are because they get special moves that they could not use. Like I said, his R1 is also a little usable in midair, and he does it twice on his own. Um, if you just jump and hit R1, I think if you hold it, jump and hold R1, he'll launch it twice. Or at least he did for that second. Now I have to actually tap it, but you can send it out a total of twice. You can send it two times. So let's see. Oh yeah, this is funny. Uh, Matsube is just hovering in midair right there. I don't know if you can see him. He's actually hovering. Because there's a cutscene supposed to be playing out here where he's actually poking at Kanbei. He's sitting on the ball and chain and he's poking at him. But he hasn't loaded in yet, so he's just doing the poking animation over here and hovering in midair. Uh, it's very weird. Kanbei is not loaded in on the other side. You would think that he would be, but he isn't. So, so this is the cutscene where he's sitting on his ball and chain. Kanbei's wrists are tied by a ball and chain. And Matsube's poking at him. So now that they saw me, it should break Hanbei out. Hanbei should actually really be there now. Um, cause I, I don't really want to turn this into a full playthrough. This isn't normally how I do these videos. And for people that have seen me do moveset covers, they're probably wondering why this video is a little different. Cause I haven't done these in a long time. It's been a very long time. So I have done things a little different already. I have covered majority of all of his moves though. I just got to finish the stage so I can cover the, uh, names of his weapons. Another thing I do for these types of videos is I show all character movesets, all of their moves rather, and then I also show their, the, what the name of the weapons are called. Hanbei is right here, but I still can't see him. I have to wait for Matsube and Kanbei to become super angry. There's an anger meter at the left of the screen over there, with both of their faces, like little chibi versions of their faces. So... There used to be a way to get it to activate early, but for some reason it just doesn't seem to want to do it. I probably should have stayed where um, where Matabe was. Like I said, forgive me for this. It's just it has been a long time since I've played this and or done the, done these particular videos. And this is normally how I do these. I show all of a character's moves, and then I play on the stage. I actually finish it so. I break out and then I break back in. I complete the stage. That's why I usually try to pick stages that are short when I do these videos because most some of the stages are pretty long and no one has time for that. So to try to make this quick, let me go ahead and take some of the bases here. I probably should have did this first, claimed all of the bases, but there would have been no time to do this because by the time I would have done this, yeah, it broke. Drillaton is not actually there. That's why it's not there in the cutscene, because I encountered it early and broke it. I broke that cutscene. <laughs> um, Alright, they're getting angry fast. That, that I looked over and that meter was like already almost full. So once they, if they get too angry, if I remember correctly, I think uh, Hanbei puts them in cells. Yeah, like puts them in prison type. Like there's two little cells up by the main area where Hanbei first spawns. And if Kanbei and uh, Matsube become too angry, I think Hanbei just imprisons them to get them to calm down. And then there is a point where you get to fight all three of them at the same time. But judging from the way I did this stage, it's probably going to end up where he winds up putting them in a cell. It might be easier for me if that's what happens. Though I probably doubt it. I don't know if he's actually there can't see him through the door he should have loaded in but for some reason for me he uh he just isn't I, don't, I can't seem to get through the door anymore is he actually there no he isn't so he's like right here but I can't see him so there has been times where a, a character will be in a ghost form like this and I'll stay near where they are for a long time and then they, they actually do load in and they just load in in front of my face and it's like the creepiest thing. I've been severely startled by that before. I'm like, oh my god. So. 
Let's see where they went. I do, I can tell I am doing this video a little differently. It's probably not as good as originally how I did it, originally on my PS3. But, um, freaking Matabane is traps. He's like a trap character. He really isn't. Motonari is, but Matabe is not. So let me break through all of his prison trap nonsense. So in order for them to become super angry with each other, I think I need to take this base, but it's not letting me take it. Because if you break some of the stages, if you break them out too bad, um, you won't even be able to claim bases because you, it's so out of bounds broken and won't allow you to do it. So, And I'm trapped on like two different traps that Han, uh, Matabe has set. He summons like these little cells and he electrocutes them from the outside because you're he's supposed to trap you in the center of it and then he electrocutes you from the outside it's like one of his moves that he does and they're also on the ground so those little silver circle things if you step on that it summons the gate around you I'm trying to figure out even where he went there he is he's running into the wall over here what is he doing so I can't attack Matabe at all. This is very weird. He's just running into the wall in place. Look at that. That's very disturbing. I'm I'm not going to look at that anymore. So he's broken. I have broken this, this stage incredibly bad. So it wasn't letting me take this. I can't even take the base either. And now it turned me into Kanbe. Uh, uh, Kanesugu rather. So many Ks, that's not what I meant to say. Okay, let's go. Um, man, did I break this stage too bad? Because Matabe is stuck running in place in the wall. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. What the hell is happening? Okay, hold on. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can take this space here. Yes, I can. Okay, the other one wasn't letting me do it because I broke it too bad. So maybe if I... Uh, take this base here i have i might have three out of four of the bases so maybe that'll cause something to happen okay let's see okay he appears to be moving now the anger meter is a little bit higher maybe i'll be able to take it okay now i can take it Okay, so all the bases are mine and their their anger meters reach so there it looks like he's going to Okay. So Hanbei is free. They're all free. They're all going to come for me. So I broke Hanbei out of his boss location. So you can actually see him on the mini map there on the far uh, right. If I jump here, he should turn around and come back towards me. That red helmet on the mini map. You can, yeah, there he is. So he broke all the way out of the boss area, broke him out, so he's like, where are you going? He's all, eat, get the, yeah, you found me, that's great, I'm gonna just, man, that's really creepy the way he does that. So, let's have him run, chase me all the way back to the boss room. Kanbe and uh, Ma uh, Matabe should have also gotten broken out of the boss area, I don't know why they didn't come after me either. It's very weird. Normally when I do this and I put main boss characters into a ghost form, they're supposed to come after me. But they didn't, so. I think it's because they're still broken. Their AI is broken, but because I broke the hell out of it. So they don't know what to do. I can't even attack Hanbei at all. And Hanbei appears to be going the other way. I need to get him. So if you break them out too bad, they freak out and don't know what to do. Because they're not in the area they're supposed to be in. So they just start running across the entire stage. In some cases, they'll go around the whole stage trying to take bases. In other cases, they just run around the whole stage and don't do anything. So, I can actually attack him. So, he's the main, main, main boss of this area. But I need to kill Kanbei as well. And, uh, I can't seem to attack Kanbei at all. So, I don't think this stage is going to work. I think I broke it super bad because now he's stuck in a death state on the ground there. He's like, what have you done to me? This looks kind of wrong if you were, if I were to put it like this. Because he's cut off and you can't see what he's doing and he's just bobbing his head up and down like that. Okay. 
So basically that is all of Hanvey's main moves. I do feel like I've done this video wrong. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot for me to show though. Just wanted to show what some of his moves look like. Some of them I couldn't really fully show because I'm too high level for it. Um, another thing I forgot to show though is if you summon a barrier with R1 and then you use his second R2 to... I need to get out of the way of these enemies. This is why I try to do this out of bounds so I don't get interrupted. Basically, if you summon a barrier and then use his second R2 to shine it at it, it can reflect it back towards him. So if you send a barrier like this and then use his second R2 and aim it at the barrier, it'll reflect it back at Modinari. Modinari will not be hurt by it, but anybody around him or behind him will be hit because it's like a mirror. It reflects the beam behind him. So you can just send it directly at him and nobody can hit him at all. So you put the barrier like this and then use his second R2 to aim at it. Um, it'll do that. It's too far away for me to reach it. Crap. Like this. It, it creates, a, it's like a mirror. It'll send it at him so he's protected the whole time he's launching that. And it lasts for a long time, so. I can't kill Kanbe here, so I think I broke the stage too bad. So we're probably going to have to end this. But basically, that is all of his main attacks. They are all very simple. There isn't really much more for me to say other than that. Um, so let's go over to his weapons now. I normally try to do this for all characters to show what the weapon names are called. Though, fortunately, I do not have all of Modinari's weapons, but his default blade, I believe, is Rinto Hagen, which is Rin uh, Rinto is Ring Blade, and Hagen, I believe, is Supreme Vision. I think this is his default weapon. Um, it should be his default weapon, yeah. Okay. And then the purple one here. This one is Rin Tohagen Unsigned. So this is, turns his weapon purple. So this is this is like his default version, but like a another variation of it rather. And then his gold version, which is Rin Tohagen Gold. All characters have gold weapons. I used to mess around with the gold weapons on Utage. I, I also have Utage. I have a Utage playlist in case you were wondering. Um... <laughs> This one here, the one that's shaped like a sun, I use this one all the time. It's one of my favorites. So let me see if I can find the kanji for it. I believe this one is Rinto Zanpa Ring, Ring Blade Wave Rem, uh, Remnants. That's Wave Remnants. Remnants means puppets. So I don't know why it would be called Wave Puppets, but the, uh, Zen, Z Zanpa. So this is the one I use all the time. I like it the most. I even used it a lot in Samurai Heroes and in Utagi because I yeah, just like the way it looks. This one here that kind of looks like a cog, this one is called Rinto Tenrin, so Rinto Ring Blade, Tenrin Heavenly Finery. So this is what it looks like. It's just like a cog. It kind The way it looks kind of reminds me of like Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess with the markings. Yeah, it, that's exactly it's a channel gate okay um that's what those are the only ones i have so the ones i'm missing is uh rinto amaterasu basically it's like red and it, it looks like um like a fire like a sun i i just i like that one a lot too and then the other one that i don't have for him is rinto donatsu which is ring blade donut which is his joke weapon it's literally a donut like a macaron <laughs> Um, that's green on one side. So I don't have all of Modinari's weapons. I'm only missing those two. Um, I haven't played as him a lot, so I don't have those weapons unlocked. But I do like the Amaterasu weapon, though. Basically, it just looks like a, it's in the shape of a circle because it's a ring blade, ring toe, and it has, like, flames. It's like, like a flames in a circle kind of type of weapon. So... I don't have all of his, unfortunately. That sucks. But I'm only missing those two. So this is his default weapon. This is normally what he looks like. 
and this is his alternate unlockable outfit in game kind of makes him almost look like a bird or something um and then this is his tank of metal outfit so this is the satoshi blue fact uh blue backed fish version i use this one all the time because i like it i like the colors and his pants have like wave designs so this is the one i use this is a tank of metal outfit you have to buy it i think it's like a um, like a thousand thousand tank of metals you can see it there so it's a thousand tank of metals to buy that and then his his um personal inscription is scheming god like i said all it does is his traps last longer and he won't be staggered because normally you're being attacked when you're trying to set them up because he has to stop to launch all of those like his r1s and r2s however if you have his personal inscription he does not get stopped um he's he doesn't become staggered in other words so you can keep launching those even though you're being attacked I actually do have his personal description on this weapon. If you look there on the upper left of the green area, I do have his personal inscription. And if I look at my chart here, this is the chart, um, it's it's lit up. So I have his right here. It's saying that he, he's the only character whose personal inscription that I have when that's not true. I actually have Kasuga's personal inscription and um, I have Tsuruhime's. I have several others, but it's because I'm playing as him it lights up his the proof that I have it on at, at least one weapon it lights up to show me that I have it so I have more than that the grid should be fully lit up but because I'm not playing as those other characters it does not show up this grid only works for characters you're playing as and based on which inscriptions you have unlocked for that character and on the weapons that you have for them so these are the only inscriptions I have from Hodenari the ones that are lit up there's not a whole lot and then I have his personal inscription here. Um, I don't have cages. So you see how when I switch the KG, do you see how it's the green one isn't lit up anymore? So it's based on characters. So these are inscriptions that I have for KG. Um, and I don't have KG's personal inscription, so that's why it's not on here. But when I go back and I switch back to Modernari, and then I go back to my grid, you see how the green is lit up there again? So it indicates that's what I have for him. It, that grid, this grid, if you hit it hit L2, hit L2, um, it'll pull this grid up to show you which inscriptions you have for the character you're playing as. Um, and it'll show you for each weapon that you've got, it'll pull it up as a whole. You can have up to, tw was it 12, 22, 20, 40. You can have up to 40 weapons. I only ever keep eight at a time for, or up to eight or seven for each character. I never keep more than that. Um, and it shows you how many inscriptions you got for each weapon. So, it's pretty neat, I like it. So that's Modenari. There's really nothing else I can say for him, really. I feel like I might have kind of semi-screwed this weapon up, or this video, and I haven't done these in a while. Um, but that's normally how I do these videos. Um, just show off move sets. I show their, their weapon names, and I translate everything I can. And his element is light and what his Giga Basura artwork image is and what it's called as well as his character image phrase that it's like the text that appears um, at the very start of a Giga Basura. So that's really how you do that. Um, that's what all of his moves are. All of his moves are very simple. They're, they're not hard or complicated at all in the slightest. They're all fairly easy to understand. Um, and he really is fun. I like I like Modernar. I've always liked him. So in Senko Kabasura 3 Samurai Heroes, I have a playlist on that game as well. And that one's all in English. I have a playlist on that game of me playing as him. So if you want to hear what his English voice sounds like, I actually like it and thought it fit him pretty well. Um, I also have a playlist on that. I have a playlist on Senko Kabasura 3, which is known as Samurai Heroes. I also have an Utage playlist, a vanilla Sengoku Kabasura 4 playlist, and my PS3 Sumeragi playlist is currently locked off though, but I do have a playlist of this game again on the PS3. So in case people want to know, because I have been getting asked if I've played these other games, and I do have them, they're just on my PS3, and I haven't accessed those playlists in years, and that's why you, you don't see them unless you look for them. So that's why I'm telling you about them in case you want to see other gameplay with this character. 
He does have an anime route, though. He was one of the characters who actually got one. And I do have a playlist on that um, playthrough. Rather, it's in my playlist. But I have covered his Son Goku creation route. I've covered his drama route and his anime route. So all routes from Odanari are covered. If you want to look at my PS4 playlist, you'll find those. My PS3 playlist is currently still locked off. Um, but in my PS4 playlist, I do have playthroughs for him if you want to see those also. But I guess thanks for watching if you did. I'm Sovereign Sage. Hopefully that'll help you um, understand how Motonari works. With some of his moves, I tr showed you a few little tricks um, about, about his third R2. Um, uh, Kinjite Baku for getting move. So if you combine his third R2 with his R1, which is repelling move barrier, so Hajikite Heki, um, if you use it twice really quickly in the center, the ring will get pulled in once and then sent back out and then pulled in again and then when it gets sent out for the second time because it only goes twice, keep that in mind, it'll send the barriers out from each other. You can trap enemies in between them. It's very funny. I might upload a short video of me doing that to a main boss mech. Maybe I'll do it to like Oichi or something. Um, I'll trap her in between two of his barriers to show you what it looks like. It's very funny. It's effective too. But I would try to get his personal inscription early if you can. You need 5,000 um, Koban coins though. And Tenka medals is what they're also called. You need at least 5,000. Um, because it'll really help you if you have his personal inscription on a weapon. Because when he's setting up those traps like that, when he's being hit, he will not be staggered. And he will not be cancelled or interrupted in the middle of launching them. However, if you don't have that personal inscription, if he gets hit in the middle of like using his R1 or something, he'll be stopped and it'll be cancelled if he gets hit. So I would try to get a personal inscription for him fairly easy if you can. Um... So that it'll help you a little bit better. Otherwise, it might be a little complicated when it gets to the higher difficulties. Trying to use somebody like Motenari, who's very slow. Um, yeah, I also forgot to show his taunt. Crap, I knew I was forgetting something. Um, basically, all he does is just move his hand. He just moves his hand forward. Um, each character does have a taunt if you hit your options button. Um, I guess I can go back in to show it. It's not very important. I just forgot about it. Each character has a taunt. Um, my back itches. Oh god. I'm also screwing this up because I'm a little tired. But anyway, his taunt is is this. <laughs> this is all it is. He has the shortest taunt out of everybody in the game. It even says so. Um, this is what his taunt is. Also, if you hold R1 again, it'll pull enemies into you. He's like, I am the summoning god. Woo! I actually like that a lot. If, if I'm far away and then I do it, it pulls the camera in as well. <laughs> Isn't that creeper? Look at that. <laughs> He's like, come to me. I'm the wind god. Okay. Um, I actually like that. I like how it pulls the camera in. It's great. So, those are some tricks. Some of his moves change based on if you hold them down or not. So, if you hold his R1, it'll pull enemies in like that. And if you use his skill revision, which is L1 plus square, and you hold it down, it'll actually pull the ring to you instead of just putting it in front of you a distance away. It'll actually bring it back to Motonari. Um, so it doesn't tell you that with his moveset, but if you hold them down, his moves change. It's kind of like the way it is with Hande. You can go from a sword style to a whip blade style. But he doesn't have a style change. All it does is change the way his moves work um, based on if you hold them down or not. But all, all of the characters are like that, though. But for in Motonari in particular, two of his attacks change based on holding them down. And that is his R1 changes and his skill revision changes. So if you hold them down, they change. And his square, hold square, to get the, him to spin his blade. Um, that's one thing that he also does. But I think I said all I needed to. Like I said, he really is fun. Um, so... Thanks for watching if you did. I'm Sovereign Sage. The next character I will be covering will be Sasuke. Um, I ever only ever do char two characters at a time for these moveset videos. I only ever cover two at a time. So after I do Sasuke, it might be a while before I cover someone else. 
The next character I'm going to be working on for story mode is going to be Matsunaga though. So in my, I might go to Matsunaga, but I'm not entirely sure because then it goes to Kataro because they're always paired together. So if I cover Matsunaga Hisahide, um, I might move over to Kotaro Fuma. So just to give you a heads up on what, what you might see um, if you're interested. Because I have covered majority of all these characters already. All their move sets are done. Even their their story modes are all done. I don't have a lot of characters left to cover with these. But um, that's what that is. So again, thanks for watching. If you did, hopefully this will help you understand how Motenari works. He's fairly e easy to use. Um, hopefully I taught you something. If not, that's okay. Um, thanks for watching anyway. I'm Sovereign Sage, and I will see you later.